David and his son Grant, who are still helping out in the boathouse and fresh off of finishing the cleanup on the inside of Arabella's hull, move up to deck level to work on the sill plate for the house sides. The house will be built out of many cedar strips, so getting the first few layers right is critical. And then Steve closes up the port side, hammering in the last plank we'll see for quite a while. Thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. So here we have the mock-up for the house sides. And this is also gonna just need to be shored up just a little bit to make sure that we're level and uh, that we have it exactly where we want it. And the height is probably gonna come down a bunch and we're probably gonna mess with the curve again, uh, the camber on the top, because we still need to get the dinghy to sit on top of here. So we're gonna see if we can make that work by lowering this. Because honestly for us, this is plenty of headroom. It's actually more than we need. There's probably a good foot above our heads. Uh, sorry to all you tall people, but we're gonna be fine in here. Um, so we need to figure out dropping this so we can fit the dinghy on top and below the boom. Um, this is gonna be the only real good spot to have the dinghy. Um, as for the construction of the house sides, they're gonna be made up of cedar and it's gonna be a lamination. So it's all gonna get epoxied together. So these will get laid down and they'll get pressed down, um, tacked in with nails, and then another layer will be put in with epoxy, more nails, and that's gonna go all the way around until we have it built up to the size that we need, and then we can cut whatever uh, shape we want out of it. Then the outside is gonna get um, fiberglassed, and the inside will get fared and painted. So this whole construction will be one solid piece, which is gonna add a lot of structural stability. Um, and then, we can then be able to take this off if we ever need to do any major refits and have a large opening that we can get things in and out of. We're gonna do the same kind of construction for the cockpit. So the cockpit that's sitting over there, as we said before, is also just a mock-up. It was just to see the size and shape that we uh, were looking at. And so that will be built in just about the same exact manner and basically be a bathtub that we drop in and be able to take out. So if we ever need to do work on the engine or pull the engine, uh, we have that big space back there to do that through. Now, the trouble with this lamination over here is that we have a lot of shape to the deck. So the deck is cambered this way and it's cambered that way um, down the length of the boat. So we need to figure out how to get laminations to sit properly so our plan is to lay a base layer that is gonna get us up to about level with the highest spot, which is here and down um, on the other side because these camber up. And then we will cut a straight line so then we can just run lamination straight around um, fairly quickly and fairly efficiently. So then we just need to mess with the first couple of layers to get it to be even and then we can just run like Lincoln logs. So the last piece of the puzzle comes with the first layer that we have to lay for the house sides. So there are screws that is, keep, that is keeping this base into the deck beams and we need to make sure that we come out far enough to cover them but we don't want the deck house to be that thick. So I went around and figured out what the farthest one is and they need to be about an inch and three quarters wide to cover the, um, the screws. So we're gonna build one larger piece on the bottom and then these are gonna come up and then we're gonna create a little cove. Oop, it was a bad. A, create a little cove into this sill and into the house sides that is gonna come up like this. And what that's gonna allow us to do is give us some space so that we can get a caulking iron in here because once the deck comes in to this sill plate, it's gonna come in in this direction. This seam right here needs to be cocked. And if our deck house is right up against it, it's gonna be really challenging to get a caulking iron in there and to hammer in some caulking. So we're gonna create a little bit of shape down at the bottom of this, and that's also gonna let some water drip off as opposed to having hard corners. Having been the previous person who did the uh, house top framing, any suggestions? 
doing exactly what you're doing. The important part, which I mean, it's going to be easy, is just uh, that first layer needs to fit tight to the sill. Because yep. that, yeah, those will fit to each other. But then the rest of it, it's just going to be okay. slathered in epoxy, and then it's going to get fiberglass on top of it. Okay. Yeah. I just have to take a little off this guy. That extra inch and three eighths flex in the middle, taking that into account. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, if I cut it, yeah, the length, it's not going to be the length. It's going to be a straight pass. <laughs> uh, Grant and I got the second coat on the oil this morning. Oh, nice. And the perfect for the second coat was to use little trim rollers, um, so we could do the whole thing in just under an hour. Nice. Yeah. So for the last day or so, I've been working on the, the sill plate, um, which will go around the house or which is around the house. And it's built upon the sill that was installed, I think a couple weeks, a couple months ago. So through here, I, I matched the, the joints, the half lap joints that were there before and just did them up again in cedar here. And I think the complexity is that the arc is in this direction across the boat and then down the boat there's a bow of about an inch and three-eighths from front to back and as you're working through with the individual cedar planks as you change them you need to make sure that you're going to compensate for that bow otherwise you're going to end up cutting it too short and once i figured that out and with some great advice from alex to basically cut way outside of your lines so you can work your way back things things seem to have worked out um, so like I said, once the sill plate's down, the next step is going to be to attach these strips and the strips will be laminated up the side 
of the jig here. Um, I think there's going to be a, a lap joint on either side, kind of like a Lincoln log style as we work our way up. And what's been a saving grace for this project has been apparently this is going to get entirely slathered with epoxy and then covered with fiberglass. So any of my little mistakes here and there will be forever entombed in, in some kind of nasty material. Anyway, um, so that's what I've been doing for the last day and a half. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Good, that's what counts. <laughs> Especially with the, uh, the clamping and unclamping and clamping and unclamping, I'd say each time I had to make a cut, it was probably about five to eight different times I had to clamp and unclamp these boards. Welcome so. to boat building. Yeah, nothing is square. <laughs> well, good job. Thank you. Like Alex mentioned at the top, there's a lot to consider before committing to the dimensions of the housetop. To accommodate the dinghy, which will ride on the roof, the overall height can be lowered, but the boom for the mainsail can also be raised a bit too. So we have a we have a Steve mark here. Does this seem accurate? Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Okay. And then we have a two-inch beam. Well, I probably want two inches of clearance under the beam. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a two-inch thick beam. So that would be about as low as we'd really want to go. And this is where Vicky is. So is that for the arc? Yeah. Figuring out maybe on the sides. How high are your uh, the gas tanks that you're looking at and the propane? Ooh. If you don't want to go below those, because then you're gonna have a. a yep. Lift. Let me go look at that real quick. If we build the whole house and we decide that we want to flatten the curve or we want to lower the whole thing and flatten the curve, there's nothing saying that we can't just buzz it off, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to be a template right now and it's all being strip built, so. Yeah. And it's not like we're building the portholes into the siding we're gonna cut those out we're gonna cut those out and it would be nice not to be hitting the ring shank nails when we cut them out mm -hmm. but by the same token like we'll do it with the festool jigsaw and we can just put a bimetal blade in there and it'll be a little slower cutting the wood but if we hit a bronze nail it'll just zip right through it it won't matter mm -hmm. so even if we do decide to move them a little bit it's just like a couple which we might have to anyways through. What do you mean? Well, when you figure out where the bulkheads are going exactly and if it fits exactly in the head where you want it to or not. That's true. That's very true. Lots to think about. Yeah. Just a thing or two. <laughs> it really is just like a giant web. You tuck on, pull on one little string and it pulls on them all. Okay. Cool. Well, that was several hours to bring us back to. We're not going to touch it. <laughs> Last cedar on the port side.
Where are you going to want this one? Basically, we want to like hopscotch every other frame, every frame, something like that. Like, hopefully, we can keep clamping. It'll be amazing if we can. time to close up port. So this will be the last plank on the port side. It's got the little bit of the stem here to fit. Uh, so you just got to get it cut to length and shaped down just a little bit. I think it might be a little too wide to go in there at this moment. Uh, get it tucked in there and then port will be done, uh, which is pretty awesome. So this is a, a little slow fiddly process with the rest of the plank fit and fastened. We gotta make sure we get it right. Otherwise, we're gonna have to come back here somewhere and scarf on another piece, and that's a whole rigmarole we definitely don't wanna do. Uh, so we're just gonna cut it off long and sneak up on it and shave the plank down a little bit and get it nestled in there. And thankfully, we've done this a few times now, so <laughs> getting a little quicker and a little better at it every time. So I have the tools here, and uh, yeah, let's get to it. So the stem's closer and I can get down against the, the stem and we're still long, but that's okay. Uh, now I want to start snaking it in so that it's basically fit and stuck to about here. And then I can work on the very, very end of the stem and get that tucked in. But it seems to be going in pretty tight. So I'm going to pull it out as far as I can and just give it a real quick swipe with the plane and take off 30 second or so. We'll see if we can tuck it back in there. Judging by the comments on Facebook and Instagram, there's a bunch of you with whiskey ready. And hold on, because this is not the whiskey plank. This is the last plank on port, but it is not the whiskey. Uh, so there might be some confusion between what is a whiskey plank and what is a shutter plank. So some whiskeys are shutters, some shutters are whiskeys, but not all whiskey planks are shutter planks, and not all shutter planks are whiskey planks. So this is a shutter plank. And that means, all that means is that it's going between two existing planks on the boat and it's closing up a gap that is shuttering that gap. So this is a shutter plank. The lower oaks that we did, that we hammered in, were also shutter planks. 
Now a whiskey plank is the very last plank that goes onto the boat. And the whiskey plank can be any plank. Some people leave the garboards off until the very end so they can just blow things out of the bilge, which definitely has its merits. So in that case, the whiskey plank would be the garboard. Some people do the shear as the whiskey. Oftentimes, the whiskey plank is a shutter plank and it gets fit between two. Um, but our whiskey plank is not going to be for quite some time. Uh, and the reason for that is the staging on the starboard side of the boat. So over here on the starboard, you can see that we do not have very much room between the staging and the hull. So for us to put on the shear strake and the last two planks, we would have to cut all of the staging back significantly, probably to about here, which you can imagine that is going to drastically reduce the amount of area we have up here on the staging to work. So what we're gonna do is leave these last planks off for quite some time, work on the interior, the spars, the rigging, the systems, the rudder, the sails, all sorts of stuff. And then when we get much closer to launch, we will cut the staging back. We won't miss it as much then. We'll slap on the last three planks, which is two weeks, three weeks at most worth of work. We'll get those planks on and then we can put the deck on. And those three planks, the only thing they stop us from doing is putting on the deck and finishing up the hull. And doing the deck and fairing and caulking the hull are two things that we want to do at the very last minute. Uh, if we were to go caulk the hull now, we're going to go through at least another summer and at least another winter, and those planks are going to swell and they're going to shrink, and that cotton's all going to loosen up, and we're going to have to harden it all up, or we're going to have to re-caulk it before launch. Uh, so for us, what makes the most sense is to leave the hull the way it is, let the wood move a little bit through the seasons, and then right before launch, we'll swell the hull up, we'll fare it, we'll caulk it, and then she'll go in the water, and that cotton will get even tighter, and it won't have a chance to go through a swelling and shrinking cycle. Because the humidity here between the summer and the winter is drastically different. Uh, so the wood, the wood in the house, the wood in the barn, the wood out here, everything moves with the seasons. Uh, so we just want to wait until that's not going to be moving before launch. Uh, so that's what's going on. I'm going to jump back over and finish up the port side. Like I said, hold on on the whiskey, at least for the whiskey plank. It will be some time. Next week, work on the housetop continues, and life outside of the boat build brings a big change to the project. Tune in next Friday to find out what's next, and hope you all have a great week.